What's up guys? I'm back with yet another year end video for 2021. Let's see how long we can take this. You know, maybe I will be done looking back at the year of 2021 by the time we're ready to start the year end lists for 2022. Actually, that's not true. This will be the final of my best lists. And unlike my hit songs video, this one will be all about the songs that weren't hits, that weren't necessarily singles. Maybe they were deep cuts on an album. Maybe they were just more likely to get overlooked, but they're things I liked and I wanted to give a shout out to. I'm not even gonna rank these. I think there's 20, there might be like 25. I don't know, but I'm just trying to spread the love. And because I'm trying to spread the love, I'm not gonna mention songs from albums that have already been in one of my top tens. So that means that stuff like 29 by Carly Pierce, Hour on the Hour by Mike and the Moon Pies, Fish All Day by Brian Kelly, 865 by Morgan Wallen, Another Day in the Life by Cole Chaney, and Waxahachie by Miranda Lambert. All that stuff is not gonna make the final list, which, you know, is sad, but whatever. Also, I wanna say every single one of these songs, I've linked in the description down below just to an adjacent YouTube video video so you can go check them out right from here and then if you ever want to know kind of what I'm up to listening I do have a Spotify playlist that's always linked down in my description down below that's the only one I maintain I don't have an Apple Music one I don't know how to do any of that stuff so just that's it first up is rest of my life by Parker McCollum yeah, then I bet it's gonna be This song was such a standout to me on Parker McCollum's Gold Chain Cowboy album. And it's the first of many songs that feature harmonica on this list because I'm having a little harmonica renaissance in my life. But this song also stands out because it's a solo right where Parker is having a moment of just kind of doubt in himself, a little bit of existential crisis. And he comes home and there's drugs on the counter along with some wine and the picture is tilted and he just doesn't know why he feels so bad. And he tries to laugh it off of like, oh, it's just the rest of my life. I think we all feel that way sometimes. It's very pandemic in that way, just kind of what am I doing here? What is this all for? And it's the prettiest sounding coping mechanism ever. Then we got You're Gonna Love Me by Hannah Dasher. If you think he's cool, and Sam Elliott still got it going on. This song is all attitude, all humor. It's got a Southern rock vibe and it's kind of a mission statement song for Hannah Dasher saying, look, she loves America, she loves Alan Jackson, and she loves getting drunk with people that don't take themselves too seriously. Those are her kind of people, and she just wants you to know who she is. Incredibly likable song that really woke me up to Hannah Dasher. Then we got I Need Your Love by Charlie Crockett. I need your love, pretty darling. This song has that same vintage vibe that people love from Charlie Crockett. If you like that song, Welcome to Hard Times, which was in like my top five maybe last year, then I think you will love this too. It's got a little bit more of a romantic desperation, but tons of horns and soul backing it up. Then we got Colder Than You by Kanan Smith. I might have finally found something colder than had a huge pop country hit with Love You Like That years ago, but he's actually sort of rebirthed his career as a more independent artist. And he had this song called Colder Than You off an album called High Country Sound that really is a ton more country. And it's kind of about this mean girl that left him in the dust. So he's looking for a drink that's colder than her. The song's funny and it sounds great. And I wish more people had known about it. After that is Let Em Burn by Emily Scott Robinson. On the edge of something wild. On the edge of something free. This is one of many really beautiful, gentle, but resolute songs off of American Siren. And in this one, it's really capturing some of the overall themes of the album of faith and doubt and maybe questioning what she believes about religion and thinking about how if there are things that aren't serving her or aren't true that she no longer believes, she has to kind of let them burn in order to evolve. Then we got Wild Palomino by the Zac Brown Band. You can't put rains on a wild palomino when you won't make a On their album, The Comeback, the Zac Brown Band kind of did the same thing that they did with their album, Welcome Home, which was to establish kind of a return to form, back to basics type of sound as a band. But of all the songs on there, the one that really hit me in the feels the most and kind of slowed things down and felt different and reflective was definitely Wild Palomino. All those harmonies kind of right front and center it just stopped me in my tracks. Really, really pretty song. And then we got Put Em On Mine by Riley Green. You can put em on mine. Yeah, Riley Green continues to deliver really straight down the middle, more traditional than your average country star music to his fans. And of all the songs on his new EP, Put Em On Mine is probably my favorite just because it makes me want to get up and dance. It's sweet and romantic and just tons and tons and tons of fiddle. Then we got Mimosas in the Morning by Ashlyn Craft. Yeah, we both know 
This is an avoidance anthem off of Ashlyn Kraft's really solid debut album. She shows off that kind of rougher, rockier voice all through this, but on this track, she's just like not wanting to have a conversation about their relationship because they've had too much to drink. So she tells the guy, hey, when we're sober, we can talk it over mimosas in the morning, which is just one of the smartest, funniest, nonsensical hooks of the year because obviously they're not going to be sober if they're drinking again but maybe you know that'll lead her to just avoiding the situation that much longer the melody of the song is so catchy to me it almost reminds me of drunk on a plane and i think you might like it too after that we got dispatched to 16th ave by muscadine bloodline Another murder on music road. Another never would have made it on this is a really smart protest song to the state of the music industry in Nashville from Muscadine Bloodline that were here on the channel. Thanks again, guys. And this song is from the perspective of a police dispatcher saying, we need some officers to go down to Music Row because there's another man down. Like another person has succumbed to the pressures of the industry and kind of lost what made them special. And in that way, it's kind of indicting the record industry as the murderer in this case. Funny, smart, good harmonies, really country. Can't wait for their album. We've also got How Lucky Am I by Caitlin Butts. With every drink I'm scooting closer to your side. This song was a Valentine's Day release and it is just so sweet. Caitlin is reflecting on how she feels lucky to be with a great guy. Her twang is on full display as is this just kind of like nice shuffling happy country beat. And after that we got Luke Combs and Billy Strings with The Great Divide. We're all so far, so far apart now. I like when Luke Combs has made a few songs about these last two years of American culture. He had Six Feet Apart last year, or two years ago, I guess, and now he's got this song, The Great Divide, kind of about, are we gonna make it through this great divide as a country? Are we gonna learn to be generous with each other? And I think it's cool that he's bringing on someone from outside of the industry, Billy Strings, the kind of guest on this song. You get a little bit of bridge building in that way. But it also adds this kind of haunting, ominous bluegrass feel, and it shows that he is thinking a little more outside the box coming up on his third album. Then we got Sober and Skinny by Britney Spencer. We both got different vices and they lead us to each other. Britney is a relatively new artist on the scene. This was the first song of hers that I had heard. And man, it's awesomely sad and sensitive with a little bit of kind of wry humor in the mix too. It's basically her talking to a friend and saying, you over drink, I overeat. When you get sober, I'll get skinny. But kind of folded into that is this idea of like, we both know we're not gonna do it. And that just makes it so human. This song just feels profoundly human to me. After that, we got You Heard by Thomas Rhett. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. There were a number of great songs on Thomas Rhett's Country Again side A, but I really loved You Heard the most. It's also got a lot of harmonica in it, but it's just full of gratitude for the place that he is in his life and his wife and his family. But it's not in such a cheesy way. It's kind of framed with this prayer device of asking God if he could have some of these things or expressing some of his worries and then reflecting on later like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you heard. And I guess it's kind of ironic because another one of my favorite songs ever is Unanswered Prayers by Garth Brooks, but I guess I like this song about answered prayers too. Even my grinchy little heart likes it. And then we got Dying Breed by Colby Acuff. I'm a dying breed, I pick a little on my six string. Colby Acuff kind of reminds me of Zach Bryan in that he's got largely acoustic music and a really cool, great voice and he can really holler, but then his spread is happening so organically. I just have tons of people messaging me saying, oh, you got to cover this song, If I Were the Devil, which I think reminds people almost of like early Coulter Wall. But for me, it's this song, Dying Breed, which is another one of these kind of mission statement songs about who he is and how this type of person is less and less common in the world that really just sticks with me. And it's so melodic. It's fun to sing along to. And then we got Roses by Mae Estes. But we'll just call him Roses. Mae is one of these artists that I have discovered through TikTok, but this song, Roses, just is leagues above a lot of the other music I've heard come from that app. It's just so sophisticated sounding. And she's singing about a bouquet of flowers that she's been given as an apology and counting off what each one is for. This one's for the lies, this one is for when you said sorry. And in one of my favorite lyrics of the year, she's describing these flowers and says, a ribbon tied around your mistakes in a pretty vase. And we both know it, but we'll just call them roses. There's something really tough about her seeing right through this gesture, but also it being in this kind of like delicate song about flowers. After that, we got Where I Wanna Be by Eric Church. Yeah, 
Kansas City. This song was just my jam off of the Heart and Soul collection from Eric Church. On the whole, the rollout of those albums left me feeling very underwhelmed, but this song has stuck with me because it's so vibey. It just feels like that muscle shoals, kind of groovy, sexy, southern rock. It's just very free in a way that a lot of Eric Church songs aren't. And sometimes when he gets a little more loosey-goosey like Higher Wire, that's not my thing. But this one is just the perfect fun balance. And then we got Heaven's Jukebox by Jaden Hamilton. If heaven's got a jukebox, Jaden put out a number of songs this year, including Bad Spot that I really liked, but Heaven's Jukebox just hits me in that sweet spot that a lot of contemporary country that still throws a bone to the traditional sounds of country tends to do. And this one does that lyrically, paying homage to the greats, as well as sonically. Jaden sounds awesome on it, and it's just a sleeper smash in my life this year. After that is What Our Parents Taught Us by Cat Hasty. I've talked about Kat a number of times before. She's this kind of stark, folksier songwriter coming out of the independent world. But this song, What Our Parents Taught Us, just stopped me in my tracks and really made me pay good attention to her as a songwriter. It's about kind of reassuring this guy that is sort of stuck in with his own personal demons. Like, we do not have to be what our parents taught us. You don't have to replay those same love stories that they did and kind of inflict those same wounds upon the world. We can write a new story together. And in that way, it's just super, super kind of real. And a total release when you get to the love will never hurt you in the chorus. She sounds better. The next one is Gray by Jesse Daniel. But aren't you tired of fading into gray? Jesse Daniel is known for some kind of like noodly, very Western feeling, and on this new album, a little bit Mexican infused music. But this song is much more kind of a slow, acoustic, intimate song, looking at a guy and saying, like, aren't you tired of being in the gray? And this song is specifically dealing with addiction, and it is just what a good friend and brother does for somebody. They reach out and say like, I want better for you than you do. That song got its own Instagram post because it's really freaking good. Less seriously, we got Ian Munsick's Humble. The Cowboys always humble. Ian Munsick's Coyote Cry, like, completely confused me as an album at the beginning of this year. And then when I reviewed it, he actually kind of explained his sound in the review, which is cool. I almost described it as like, country music by way of Las Vegas. Like it's incredibly Western in some ways, but then really over the top and poppy and kind of silly in other ways. And I feel like that vibe is captured so well on Humble, which just feels like a song that makes me wanna dance. It pumps me up. I play the song when driving all the time and you got all this fiddle in it. Loveland, don't you think there needs to be more fiddle in country music? got that big beat. It's such an odd song and it's so fun to sing when he says a cowboy's always humble. <laughs> Love it. I guess I like it a lot. Why am I doing all these qualifiers? I just like it. And then there's also That Train by Mac Lephart or Leaphart. I don't know how to say his name. No, I still ain't that train. This song came on somebody's Spotify when we were just tubing on the river and I was like, what is this song? I love this song. And it does have harmonica, you know, my favorite instrument of the moment. But it's the words of this song about feeling like, man, I haven't gotten to where I'm supposed to be yet. I still haven't caught that train, whether that's a career, whether that's marriage. This guy is describing being in a laundromat and still living lease to lease and just feeling behind that I really relate to, but then the song just has so much movement and it has that kind of old Americana, kind of cross country feel to the whole song. It's great for road trips and it's from an album called Music City Joke. Last harmonica reference in the video is Taylor Swift's I Bet You Think About Me. I bet you think about me. This was part of Taylor's Red re-release and she has one of those collaborations with Chris Stapleton where he's kind of just singing harmonies on it, but I think they sound really good in this case, unlike the Adele ones, which I'm like, we did not need this Easy On Me country remix. Mostly, I think the song is just really clever and funny. It's a Laurie McKenna co-write and you get that like hilarious outro where she bashes his organic shoes and his million dollar couch. It's just so specific and funny. And I have a whole video on her kind of return into country music that you can just go watch. Next is Who I Am by Caleb Lee Hutchison. Don't need your blueprint for what I, I already do. 
This is another mission statement songs. I think I enjoy those from Artists on the Rise, these songs that kind of capture, here's what I'm about. And on this one, Caleb is someone that cares about country music and you feel kind of an outlaw vibe on it, which you wouldn't expect from somebody that's came in second place on American Idol. And I kind of like that in this song, Caleb addresses the thing I just did, which is associate him with on TV and kind of says like, all I can be is myself. People think they know me and my authenticity because they've seen me on TV, but here's who I am. And who he is, is a dude with a great voice and a cool country sound. Brent Cobb produced his EP. It's great. After that, we got Off Broadway by Flatland Cavalry. Graffiti tattoos cover faded brick walls and the street. Now y'all know I love Flatland Cavalry. They're right there over my shoulder. I mean, I'm rocking some Flatland merch right now. And on their new album, Welcome to Countryland, there's one song called Off Broadway, which is about Cleto Cordero kind of sitting on a street corner and looking at the bricks and the people walking by in St. Louis, Missouri, and having this moment of gratitude for them and just one of those moments where you see the world around you and appreciate its beauty. And this is punctuated with not just the fiddle that people associate with Flatland, but also some accordion in this case. Listen to this opening line. Here we sit in this place that's frozen in time where they turn the mighty Mississippi into sweet barley wine. I mean, what a great way of saying they make alcohol here. You know, I love when songwriters just find those cool ways to say something simple. Next is Ernest's American Rust. That diamond ring your grandpa gave your grandma way back. I know that it's Flower Shops that is immediately Ernest's biggest hit now, but I really thought American Rust was such a standout moment for him and one that I didn't expect given that he's typically writing songs like One Mississippi for Kane Brown and a bunch of the stuff on Morgan Wallen's Dangerous. This song was surprisingly country. Flower Shops feels surprisingly country to me as well. And this is kind of looking around at small town America and appreciating it. It's not like a groundbreaking concept, but it's really beautifully done and I just found it a nice memorable sing-along melody that I've enjoyed all year. And then the last song is just two words by Colby Cooper. I did not mean to leave such a kind of harsh song as the final song on this list because the two words are F you, which is what Colby Cooper just says very outright. There's nothing coy about this song. And it captures the attitude of that really heavily rock influenced Texas scene that, you know, I think at this point, most viewers of the channel are familiar with. All right, that's it. That is, like, that is a lot of songs. This is gonna be a biatch to edit, so let's get to it, and I will, you know, what will I do a worst video? We'll have to wait and see.